Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make these super sparkly soap cupcakes. This project has a few steps. First, we make a cold process soap base. Then we make the soap frosting and to top it all off, we put a pink embed on the top. It's got lots of sparkle, it smells amazing, and if you wrap it up, it makes a great gift. Cupcakes are one of my favorite food groups and anything cupcake is something I've tackled before on SoapQueen.com or SoapQueen TV. So check out SoapQueen.com or SoapQueen TV for previous cupcake recipes like bath bomb cupcakes and soap cupcakes. This is a pretty advanced process, so if you've never made cold processed soap before, please stop right now, head to the beginner series on soapqueen.tv or the beginning soap making series on soapqueen.com or just the first two chapters of my book, Soap Crafting, and learn how to make cold processed soap. Get a few successful batches under your belt before you attempt this recipe. Before getting started with our soapy cupcakes, we need to do a little bit of prep. We have to make that pink end bed. Cut two ounces of low sweat clear melt and pour base up and then melt it in the microwave. It doesn't take long to melt, so make sure you're melting on 10 to 20 second bursts. Add 1 8 teaspoon of snowflake sparkle mica and 1 half teaspoon party pink mica from brambleberry.com to the melted soap base. Mix this well together. Now I'm noticing a few clumps, so just do a quick spritz of rubbing alcohol and poof, those little mica bubbles burst. Pour this mixture into the small nine ball mold from brambleberry.com and allow to cool. In addition to prepping the melt and pour ahead of time, the ingredients for the soap frosting need to be prepped ahead of time as well. Measure and melt out the frosting oils and then place them in a refrigerator overnight. Both the oils and the lye water need to be cooled down underneath 70 degrees. To cool your lye water, you can place in the refrigerator overnight with a huge, massive sign that says, not food safe, or, this is my favorite idea, if you don't have a dedicated soap freezer or refrigerator, just cool your lye water down in an ice water bath that you are monitoring the entire time. Let's also prep by cutting the tip off of our frosting bag and placing the tip inside. Now it's time to make our base. Start by dispersing our colorants. Add one tablespoon of a lightweight oil into three different mixing containers. I'm using sweet almond oil. Then add one teaspoon of titanium dioxide, one teaspoon of neon blue raspberry colorant, and one teaspoon of hydrated chrome green, which I think looks like a great teal. I have a Soap Queen TV short on how to mix colorants, so watch that if you're curious about what goes into mixing colorants ahead of time. I'm going to measure out my champagne and my white rose fragrance oil from brambleberry.com so that everything is ready to go. This blend is 1.5 ounces of champagne fragrance oil and one ounce of white rose fragrance oil. Together, it's a wonderful fragrance. Now, let's get started making our base. First, suit up for safety. Gloves, long sleeve, long pants. Kids, pets, gone in the other room. I have at least an hour to soap and, of course, the always protective goggles. Some soapers prefer to soap with a full face shield, so do whatever you're most comfortable with, but make sure you soap safely. My lye water and my oils for my base are about 120 degrees, but I'm gonna add some sodium lactate. Sodium lactate is a sodium salt of lactic acid. It's a common food preservative. It's completely optional, but it acts as a hardening agent and allows you to get your soap out of the molds faster. The usage rate is one teaspoon per pound of oil. So to this recipe, I'm adding one teaspoon of sodium lactate directly into my cooled lye water. Mix the lye water and the oil. I pour the lye water slowly down the shaft of my stick blender to help prevent air bubbles. I also burp my stick blender. Now pulse your stick blender while stirring until you get to a nice light trace. Light trace is a perfect time to add fragrance and colorants. Add two teaspoons of hydrated chrome green mixture. Then one teaspoon of neon blue raspberry. 
Finally, add one teaspoon of dispersed titanium dioxide. Mix this in with a whisk. Then add half of the fragrance blend. Continue to blend until medium trace or a thin pudding. Since this mold is pretty floppy, make sure to place it on something like a cutting board so you can easily move it once you've poured your soap. Once you're at a thin pudding trace, pour this into the mold and tap for bubbles. Move your soap out of the way and it's time to work on step two, soap frosting. My frosting oils have been in the refrigerator overnight, so they're actually pretty cold. I'm gonna put them in the microwave for just about 20 to 30 seconds to kind of just soften them up just a teensy bit so I can blend them into a nice spreadable mixture. Now I'm gonna use my hand mixer to work on getting this into a beautiful creamy butter. Mm. This is a pretty good, I see some hard chunks in there, I'm just gonna break them up. I want everything to be nice and smooth here. Okay, perfect. So now my oils are mixable. So you can either pour your lye water kind of slowly into the bowl and use a silicone spatula to gently incorporate it in, or if you're really good and you feel comfortable and really confident in your lye safety skills, you can continue to just add like a tablespoon of the lye water at a time and blend it in slowly on the lowest setting until your lye has been fully mixed in. Note that this process usually takes between five and 10 minutes. You never, ever, ever want to splash lye anywhere. So it's better to be safe than sorry and just mix in very, very slowly. Lye safety is of the utmost importance when making soap. If you are unfamiliar with how to handle lye safely or need a refresher course, please check out my How to Handle Lye Safely video on soapqueen.tv. Once your lye water is fully incorporated, turn on the blender and mix for another probably five to seven minutes. You're really looking for your icing to be able to form and sustain peaks. Once your icing has been able to form and sustain peaks, it's time to add your fragrance oil. Pour the rest of the fragrance oil blend into the icing. Notice this kind of decreases the peaking ability. Like it's a lot thinner. You're gonna have to blend some more, probably another five to seven minutes. You want your mixture to be soft enough so that you can actually put it into the frosting bag, but yet it needs to also be strong enough to hold whatever frosting peaks you create. This is a really kind of fine line to find. And there are a variety of variables that can really change things, most notably heat. If you're soaping in a hot environment, you may have to mix longer than I have to mix here in Washington State. The colder temperatures do hold those peaks for longer. This texture looks pretty good. It's holding, it's, it looks like it's holding its designs. I'm gonna give it a try. I'm using this tall, narrow container to hold my piping bag. It's a lot easier to fill my soap frosting bag once it's in this kind of tall container. Plus, it helps contain any spills that are coming out of the bottom. Just gonna scoop a couple scoops into my frosting bag. There we go, hold firmly with one hand and then guide it to the middle of the first cupcake and just put a dollop of frosting in the middle of that cupcake. Now move on to the next one. We're going for a dollop in the middle of each of our cupcakes. Perfect, we're gonna build around these. Now it's time to fill the bag more. So now do one circle around the base of that dollop. Just one circle around the base of the dollop. Move on and do all of the cupcakes. This provides an excellent base to build gorgeous soap frosting peaks. And now it's time to do our peaks. Now again, one hand firmly closing your frosting bag and one hand firmly near the middle. Start going around your dollop of frosting. There we go, now we're building it, perfect. And go around again. You'll notice the tip just really helps to make perfect frosting peaks. There, I love the height we're getting on this. This is just fantastic. Nice, good height. I'm almost not exhaling. I'm so worried that these are gonna fall, but they're doing great. Now, just the last final few touches. Time for glitter, because everything is better with glitter. I'm doing fine iridescent glitter from brambleberry.com all over the tops of these. And then I also kinda wanna give it a really kind of shimmery sheen. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of snowflake sparkle mica. There we go. And then finally, gonna top with those really cute pink embeds from earlier. So here we go, dup, dollop, dup, mm, tippy top. There we go. These look so cute. Now remember how I said heat was not your friend when it came to frosting? Definitely not your friend here. So 
I would put these in the refrigerator or freezer at least for a few hours to make sure that that soap frosting really sets. Now it's time to unmold these. So I did make these ahead of time just for you. And the way you unmold them is a little bit tricky because you can't really just plop this on over because of course the top would get ruined. So the way it works is you pull gently away from the side. You're really working to release this airlock. You can pull it gently from the bottom. You don't wanna pull this from the base because then you do risk the top of the frosting just boop, coming off your cupcake. These need to cure like any regular cold process soap recipe for four to six weeks. Once they're cured though, you're welcome to package them up really cute like this and give them away, sell them, or keep them all to yourself. I can't wait to see the soap cupcakes you create with this technique. Please post them to our Brambleberry Facebook page or put them on Instagram and hashtag them SoapShare. Until next time, happy soaping. it's time to unmold our Sophie cupcakes. I made these ahead of time so I could unmold them on camera with you. And it's pretty easy to unmold, although they're a little bit challenging because of course you don't want to hurt the top part. <laughs>